on Wednesday, May 28th, 2025, Jenkins LTS 2.50, what number is it now? I've lost track. 504.2 was released. In this video, we're going to be talking about all the changes in that release. If you're new here, my name is Darren Pope. I'm a developer advocate at CloudBees, and along with me today, I have Mark Waite. Mark, how are you doing today? Great, Darren. Thanks for asking. No matter how many times I practice it, I still forget the numbers. The, the numbers are are inevitably a combination of digits that are hard to remember. Keep it up. Yeah, and I, and I will do a little TMI. I was driving through a pharmacy yesterday, and it's like, what's your address? Plank. <laughs> oh, Plank. wait a sec. Numbers. I, numbers. Numbers. And, and then she said three. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Yes, I remember now. Anyway, that's not what we're to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about the new release that came out yesterday at the time of this live stream. Uh, it was a pretty, dare I say, almost non-event. Yes, yes, you dare. Uh, okay, I, I do dare. Uh, but before we get into that, Mark, for people that haven't been around here and it's like, what is this LTS thing? But I want you to explain to us uh, what uh, a Jenkins LTS is. Sure. So Jenkins releases a new version every week, like clockwork, week after week after week. But every 12 weeks, we choose a baseline that will be used for the Jenkins long-term support release. We choose the baseline and then we apply some stabilizing or necessary patches to it to release dot one. So 2.504.1. Four weeks later, we release another ver another release, same baseline, but 2.504.2. .2. Then four weeks after that, 2.504.3, and we've finished the 12 week cycle. We pick a new baseline and do it again. And picking that new baseline is coming up again pretty soon. soon. It is, right? Very soon. But again, not what we're talking about today, but sort of. We'll but, see that in just a minute. Yeah. Uh, so with the release, if you've not taken a look at the release notes, what you can do, or change log, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, you can go into download. I'm going to zoom in so you can see in case it's like, okay, mine doesn't look like that. Maybe you've resized it uh, so that you've got a hamburger. So just go to download. And then you'll end up on the download page and then you'll see change logs. And we're going to be focusing on the LTS side today. So 504.2. Now I have to admit, I cannot remember in my life only having a single item <laughs> in an LTS release. That's a, that's a very good sign, right? This was a nice and simple LTS, really, truly. And taking a look at it, it wasn't a real change other than some telemetry changes. Now, you're thinking, oh, wait a minute. Jenkins is getting telemetry from my controller? Yes. Yes, maybe. Right? Uh, because yes. in theory, the, the answer is yes, but you can opt out. But right. Please don't. You know, well, it's yeah, all, it's, it's, <laughs> it helps. It does. It's important for, for the Jenkins project. We use the telemetry to decide, well, in this case, the goal is to decide if something can be removed without breaking users. And, and that's, that's a good th piece of information for users, right? right? If we remove something and we later hear shouts and cr cries that, hey, I was dependent on that, that, that's a much better thing if we know that before we attempt to remove it. Again, it's a project that is now 20 plus years old. Right. We try to do things in a controlled fashion. Well, and compatibility matters, right? It's part of the part of the Jenkins project's governing documents describes how much compatibility matters to Jenkins. We don't like breaking people, and that's that's a good thing. Speaking of breaking people, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking ahead towards, and that's that's all there is in dot two. In fact, that is to, to be to be clear, we'll also take a look at the upgrade note upgrade right. guide because you should always take a look at the upgrade guide even okay. if there's only one item so we'll take a look at the upgrade guide uh no notable changes for 502 great didn't expect any especially That's with right. one item just good so doing the so when you take a look at your change log always take a look well specifically an lts change log take a look at the upgrade guide a mm -hmm. weekly change log there is no upgrade guide right because weekly is weekly we won't go any further than that. But speaking of weeklies, what I have here is a weekly of 512. So this is eight weeks after the current baseline. 
We're at 504 Correct. on the baseline. We're eight weeks later. This is how it looks now. How it looks is the key phrase. Mm -hmm. What's changed here? Uh, boy, that left nav looks really short. It, what is yeah. all that stuff up in the right hand corner? What's that about? Exactly. So the, the top is shorter and cl clearer and the content up on the top right are many of the things that used to be over on the left. Is it just really that simple? Well, there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff going on there, but for me, that's the, that's my simple explanation. Right. And certain things get moved, certain things don't, and everything's in flux. So what does this mean? Mm. What this means is in the next LTS, which ships on July 23rd, not the dot three of this, that's in four weeks, but the one after that mm -hmm. is going to have this new header. So what can we recommend people to do now? Well, so now's a good time to test drive weekly yourself, just like we're doing here with your set of plugins and your setup. So create yourself a, a prototype, a sandbox somewhere and play with it. See, hey, how does it behave? Sort of get yourself used to it. It's Manage Jenkins is now in that under that gear icon in the top right. Yep. And once you've clicked there, it'll feel largely the same as it did before. Right, because this page doesn't change, the actual page doesn't change, it's just how you get to it changes. Correct. So I think one thing you were saying there is test driving a weekly, I think that's correct, but it's going to be test driving a weekly with every plugin that you have installed on your actual correct. production environment. If you don't do that, right. then, because here's what, Here's what the project needs help with. We're roughly eight weeks out from this being in the LTS line, the next LTS. Right. Uh, if people can start taking a look at it and understanding what's going on and reporting issues. Again, there are a number of people that are focused on this right now. This is a very fast moving thing, but we need help. Yeah, we, so, and we would love to have help. This is a yeah. great opportunity for people to hey, let's, there are critical times in a project's life, and this is one of those very interesting times when people can make a, a larger difference than even on average. Contributing by testing with your plugins and your configuration and your jobs in this environment is a good thing to do because it helps you see what will the experience be for you and for your users come July 23rd when this releases. Right. When this releases in the LTS, it's already available to weekly users and weekly users, and there are many of them, are already using it. So right. it's not that we're nervous, oh, it's unreliable. It's rather, this is a system that has lots of things that are going on in it, and it's good for you to know how does it behave for you. And again, eight weeks out. Right. So it's, it's we're walking towards that. Uh, let me answer a couple of questions that people may be thinking about. Well, can I just go back to the old way of doing it? No, it's, it's core. This, this is what's happening. Right. Um, the second question I would probably ask is what made the project decide to do this? What was wrong with the old way of doing things? Yep. I, I can't answer that because I'm oh, not I, actively I, working. Can you answer uh, a little bit? Of I've it? got, I've got, I've got part of it, which is okay. one of the things we were sacrificing before was vertical space. Hmm. And vertical space is precious on web pages. Right. The, the web designers work very hard to keep things above the fold, to keep things visible to users. And right. we were giving away a big chunk of vertical space by having two rows up at that top instead of right. one. So by us converging to a single row, we have given back vertical space for better use for users. Now, the other is we're also giving back some horizontal space by moving things into that top right hand bar. And right. so, again, we're giving you things that for users are helpful. They'll, they'll give them benefit as they as as they use the product. Let me see if I can tripwire this to show what happens. So you can see that some of the items went away uh -huh. and then we get the ellipsis. Let me go ahead and go back all the way back out. So watch the lock. I'm going to narrow my 
browser a little bit. We now get an ellipsis, which took a couple of things with it. So mm -hmm. they're still there. So we're not trying to mobile optimize. In case that's another question, it's like, are you trying to mobile optimize this? No, that's, will Jenkins ever be mobile optimized? I, that's that's a that's an entirely different different exercise, right? Yeah. That, yes. That, that now we're looking at something. Oh, what might it be on a mobile experience? Yeah. But first, first and foremost, let's make it better for users on their primary web pages. And for most yeah. developers, their primary web pages are on their desktop machine or right. their laptop. Yep. So again, this is in active active development. Right. We are eight weeks minus one day away from this being GA. Yep. So, uh, fair warning, we will warn you again in four weeks. We'll talk about it again. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're looking forward to it and, and we expect it will continue evolving further as we get closer and closer to that LTS baseline selection point. Right, which should be in two-ish weeks, right? Right, correct. The snow's over in Colorado. The heat has arrived in Texas. It has. Um, it's summertime, I guess, at least in the Northern <laughs> Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. What else can we talk about today? I think we've pretty much covered it. We covered it. it. Thanks, Darren. You're welcome, Mark. So again, we'll be back in four weeks. Let me double check the date because I do have that written down. We're going to be, oh, this is going to be a little bit different. Because in four weeks, Mark is not going to be here. Mm -hmm. Mark is going to be at, is it CDCon or... It's oh, the last, oh. last open week source June. open source summit North summit. America and CDCon. Yes, you're right. That's happening in Denver. Right. So if you're going to either of those events, check out Mark. He'll be there. Yes, I won't be there. So the show will be happening on the Monday after that. Well, that'll be Monday, June thirtieth, at the same time, four thirty Eastern time, and right. whatever the other time zones are from there. Uh, so that'll be the key point. Is we're Show will be late, but the release is still happening on that Wednesday. Mark will be fiercely setting over in the back corner, getting... No, it's not how it works. <laughs> um, surprisingly enough, it's how it used to work. Mm. Except not Mark. Mm. Right? Right. <laughs> there used to be somebody going and punching the button to do the release. Used to be. Not anymore. It sort of seems weird that an automation tool is having a person punch the button, but hey, <laughs> had to start somewhere. So anyway... Thanks for watching. Uh, if you would, please do the YouTube things and leave us a thumbs up if you don't mind. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And we'll see you again in roughly four and a half weeks. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend because the weekend is coming. The weekend is coming.